Hello everybody, today's video is a fleet update. We're going to be looking at my BMW 130i. As you can probably tell, it's winter, about minus two out there today, and then I'd rather not be outside working on my car, this is one of the few times I actually have the time to do so. And there's a number of jobs I've really been meaning to get around to on this car, which need doing, and so we're going to get that done today. In the background, we've got Jordan, the detailing doctor, working on all the cars, getting them cleaned up, because that's one of the big things I want done with this car, getting it nice and shiny and having a coating put on it, so it's going to be a little easier for me to maintain over the next few months. There are a couple of jobs I've actually tended to already that were bugging the heck out of me. The car was very slow to start, and with winter coming, it was only getting worse. I had a suspicion this was the battery, and it turns out I was right. Unfortunately, these cars should have an AGM battery in them. So to replace this with the cheapest, decent battery I could find was still about 250 odd quid. Very expensive, quite annoying to try and get it in here too, because BMW have it hidden in a little sort of, well, pit under a nest of cables so it was a little bit frustrating to change but got it done no problem reprogrammed it with carly because you have to program the batteries in these cars and it was sorted the next item was the rear wiper which is half done it's not doing a great job of cleaning the rear window but originally it wasn't spraying anything out at all and because of the design of the one series this gets coated pretty quickly that was actually a much easier fix than i feared i thought there could have been a, a leak in the system somewhere that could have been impossible for me to diagnose turns out it was just a small little bit of dirt or debris stuck in the end of the hose here so you just pull this cap off, undo it, take it out, flush it with some water, and um, you then press the windscreen wiper or washer button, and it just fired the debris out over the top of the house, and that was all done. Uh, next thing I need to do, but can't do today, is replace this, because it's now very bendy, so it doesn't actually do the best job. It's all right, but not brilliant. But the first job I'm going to be tackling in the video is this, the fuel filler flap. This has actually bugged me since I owned the car first time round. Very common one series issue. It's essentially given up the ghost. It no longer sort of shuts on its own. Uh, this means that more often than not, when you pull away, this thing will open and then it'll just flap around like that and knock alongside the car every time you go round a corner. Very annoying and it's one of these fixes that is perhaps more complicated than it needs to be and i'll show you why when i get this all out so um wish me luck so jordan's begun cleaning the car but he's taking a break so i'm going to get cracking with this now let me show you what you have to do it's a reasonably simple procedure uh, you have to take this little cover off which i'm going to do in a moment but you then have to drill through these four little circles here the reason being that the piece we're actually trying to replace is just a very very tiny element in here Unfortunately, there's no way to get to it without removing this entire section here, which is called the fuel pot. So I've now got to extract this out, which apparently isn't the easiest. Ah, there we go. Next stage is to remove this here, which is essentially a guide for the little plastic plunger. That's the way that this stays locked when you're driving, when the car's locked up and all that jazz. Obviously, it's a bit of a problem with this being broken because it means that when this is open, actually, it's stopping it from even closing at all. Now, fuel cap off. Already drilled these four holes, which was terrifying. Drilling into your sort of petrol flap. And behind here, there are essentially some little levers, I guess you would call them, that you kind of have to wedge out. <sighs> That is not an easy job. The internet tells you it's not super easy, but this is the old fuel pot. And the problem is this, this little spring here. So it's just not working. Something in here has just broken off. It just doesn't want to work. New fuel pot, genuine BMW, 40 quid. And you can tell that is what it's meant to do. Now, I gotta get the devil in and it took me about 10 minutes to get this one out the big problem was this little rubber here which you have to absolutely mash so i think i'm going to grease this up a little bit because you've got to get it nicely in here so it sits and obviously doesn't let any petrol get past it if you happen to spill some like i mean ha I, don't, I don't even like all oh, right so let's get that open oh, fuel filler is not easy at all no, 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 no. I am not doing that ever 
ever, ever again. There is a very good reason that I pay people like him to do stuff on my cars, which is that I am absolutely awful at it. I think the little pin that locks the fuel flap may have broken. Don't know if I've actually broken the processor. I think that might have already been broken. But the good news is everything goes back together now. So that's the car clean, and she really does look good. I've also had a ceramic coating applied. Jordan's currently testing out a couple of different products. So we're going to see how this goes and then report back. Obviously, with the roads being all wintry and horrible at the minute, it's actually excellent conditions for seeing just how durable this is going to be. That being said, this car's not actually finished yet because one other thing I've wanted to change on this for an awful long time is the wheels and the tyres. As you might imagine, with conditions chilly enough that we've had snow on a few occasions recently, winter tyres are something of a necessity, particularly on a light rear-wheel drive and relatively powerful car. I did a fair bit of research and I've decided to go for Michelin Cross Climates. They seem to get really excellent reviews and more importantly, they could come in a reasonable size. Now that car should run a staggered setup. They're 18 inches, should be about 215 on the front and 245 on the rear. But for the sake of ease, I have gone instead for 225 4018s all round. It's a really common tyre size, which means that you can get pretty much anything you want. And the sizes are near enough to original that we haven't changed the rolling radius by more than about 2%, which means that the speedo and everything is still going to read accurately enough. As it happens, when I went to check the car, it turns out that one of the previous owners has had the same idea already, because the Avons it's currently wearing are in fact 225 4018s all round. For wheel choice, I was somewhat on the fence. I decided I wanted something again from my friends at OZ, because I really like the quality of the products that they make, and I know they're going to fit the car. Now, for my S2000, I have these Allegerita HLTs in 17 inch. They're an extremely lightweight wheel, really very nice piece. On the 130, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go down to 17 inch, but ultimately decided I wanted to stay with an 18 inch rim. And so I've gone instead for something slightly different. I've gone for a Sparco wheel. They're actually made by OZ, but it's more their sort of budget line. And I picked a wheel that I think is gonna look pretty good on that car's Le Mans Blue paintwork. These are Sparco DRS in Rally Bronze. And they're gonna get fitted to the car in a few hours, but you'll be able to see them in a few seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that looks absolutely fantastic. It's actually been a couple of days, not a couple of hours, since the last clip. And you can see that the sealant is working really nicely with the car beading up wonderfully. I think these wheels really do lift the look of the whole thing, and I'm very, very happy with them. Now, I didn't choose these for any sort of weight saving or performance gains that they might offer, because they don't really offer any. These are reasonably budget wheels at about £800 a set, and I'm pretty sure they are exactly the same weight as the OEM BMW items that came off. I haven't yet had a chance to test the Michelin Cross Climate tyres, but I shall be doing that soon. It is an degree today, so it is the perfect time to get out there and see just how good they are. I've recently driven a couple of vehicles with similar winter tyres on and been very impressed, so hopefully this will make the car that little bit more usable at this time of year. That being said, I am still on the fence as to what to do with this car, and it's put me in a bit of a tricky situation. I spent so long trying to get it back that I guess I never really stopped to think how it would fit into my life. And the problem is that by the time I did eventually reacquire it, my own personal circumstances, situation and needs have changed. Now, financially, I'm in a much better place than I was a couple of years ago, but this car sits on a driveway which can only keep a certain number of cars, and every vehicle that I have now really does need to earn its place. With my Celica hopefully very soon on its way back, I've got to really ask of the BMW if it does enough different and right to justify its place. Now, there are a lot of things that I really do like about it. In fact, today I'm going to be filming the classic YouTube five things I love and then five things I hate videos on this very car. Now, I love the way that it looks. I love the way that it goes. I love the fact it's got a cool old school straight six engine in it. But as the sort of practical daily car, it doesn't have masses of room in the back for passengers like the 7 Series used to, nor does it have a very large boot like an estate or a crossover might. It's all right on fuel at 31 to the gallon average, but that's not exceptional. 
I'm starting to get a lot of press cars again, so for big long journeys I'll generally use one of those because I'll be reviewing it and everything else. And to fix the things on this car that I don't like, probably going to cost quite a bit of money to put the bird suspension kit and everything on. It's going to be about two and a half thousand pounds. And that's an investment in a car that isn't worth an awful lot. But if I sell this, I'm extremely likely to never, ever get it back. And having just spent two years trying to hunt down a car quite like this, only to realise there aren't any, I'm very loath to get rid of it. So I'd love your thoughts on the, the little one series and if maybe you'd like to buy it, let me know. But whether I want to sell it, I still haven't decided. Anyway, that's a little update on this car from me. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.